Great job, dude. So much cool art. Sorry I missed it till now. Have you thought of using Flash or other vector programs? You can put all your sketches in and create lines bent and tapered to your precise liking. Good question, my dear Panda Man. Let's talk about it. A brief history about my art experience. Timeline! I drew stuff on paper! I also drew stuff on the computer! Mostly on paper! Clean up your room, Johnny! I went to this place! I used Illustrator for a week and had a ball! Whee! I used Photoshop for longer and had a ball! <laughs> then I knew how to scan stuff and liked it! Whee! Then I used Flash! Then I went to this place! They had a tablet! Wahoo! I bought my own tablet and blah blah blah, the rest is history. I have a small set of programs to tackle my art nowadays. For the brunt of my creations, especially for drafting and polishing line art, I use Fire Alpaca. For effects, comic paneling, and occasional coloring, I have Photoshop CS4. And then there's Flash. We're gonna give you a shiny star sticker. Okay, so maybe I'm being harsh. Let's take a good look at Flash here. Flash started life as a program by Future Wave Software, later bought by Macromedia, and much later bought by Adobe. It gave users the tools to create a bunch of interactive doodads for their websites. Slideshows, games, those adverts that won't stop tickling in the corner of your screen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Flash's ability to produce moving images from vector art is what it became most famous for. Back in the early 2000s, the potential seemed limitless. Some of the best animations came from Flash. Heck, I even made art and animation with Flash. But... only a few pieces reached completion. But Jonathan, you praised Flash's ability to make the internet beautiful and moving pictures move. Why have you given up on it so easily? You may ask? Well, I'm no stranger to procrastination. Is it merely another case of me going, eh, yeah, I'll do it later, and calling it a YouTube night? Is it perhaps I have not mastered the program, and thus the beast had bested me? Is it perhaps the follies of my own personal preference using raster programs over vector ones? <gasps> well, in your typical raster program, you have a brush tool with many sizes and shapes, each giving a different feel to both lines and colors, filling the image with thousands of hues. In a vector program like Illustrator or Flash here, you have plain lines and block fill. The pencil tool creates lines, just like one in a raster program does. And as logical as it would seem to use this for, well, line art, the rigid nature of the pencil tool makes the picture less interesting. The line stays one thickness throughout. There isn't a way to give it any variation. That's why many tend to use the brush tool. With a swipe of this tool, the brush strokes can be as skinny or as fat as the artist wishes. They can be round, square, here, there, everywhere! It truly brings life to the pic- What the? That's not what I drew! Why is it blobbing out? And that's where things get messy with Flash. You have two flavors of- Oh, dandy. I'm gonna be here a while. You could use the pencil tool, which is rigid and dull, or you can use the brush tool and discover where that crazy vector noodle wants to go today. So there you go. Flash is chaotic. But even so, there is potential for making decent art. So here's what I'm going to do. First I will show how I work in my go-to program for drafting and inking, Fire Alpaca, and then I will put the chaotic yet willing underdog Flash through its paces. So throw on your smocks and flat tire hats, folks! We're gonna make some art. Greetings in post-commentary for What in the world am I doing? Apparently I'm showing my unsteady drawing hand at work! Oh, and I'm also putting together the line art for three characters in different poses. In Fire Alpaca. I started off with Kirby. Kirby's the easiest to draw and polish, since he's a simple design made up of mainly circles. His simplicity makes him a great warm-up character, or doodle buddy, when the mental block is hitting hard. This drawing took about four minutes, since I was getting the lines down faster than usual. Normally, it takes about ten minutes to get Kirby on the canvas. Next, I chose Mega Man. Can't get enough of the blue bomber, apparently. 
This is a character with a bigger variety of shapes, which adds to the drawing time. I also took extra care to add in the details on his armor, which you can see in his Mega Man 11 design, or his Smash Brothers design. This drawing took a total of 24 minutes, which is close to how much I usually take on him. Lastly, I chose to draw a weird mannequin. Well, the more human proportions offer a greater challenge, though I can't draw hands to save my life. And a mask. Is it a hockey player? No, it's a Spider-Man! I used the dots to help me work out the placement of the webbing pattern on his costume. The logo area can be a very tricky spot, though. Flipping the image is useful to check for errors that you wouldn't otherwise see, which definitely helped out with both Spidey and Mega Man here. Usually a drawing of Spider-Man takes me an hour to finish, but I did this one in half the time. And here are all three characters in two extra poses. Plus my signature. Time to jump into Flash for a pre-experiment experiment! I start with a rough doodle. Next, I try to ink the picture. Emphasis on try. The brush is already being uncooperative, with inconsistent line thickness, and attempts to create different shapes to the ones I'm trying to draw. I corrected some of the line issues by pulling on various points from the line with the subselection tool. There's also the matter of its pickiness with brush size dependent on magnification, as seen with the light shines and my signature. A foreboding reminder that... This is just the beginning. Back to the character poses challenge I did in Fire Alpaca, this time in Flash. I decided to only ink one pose for each character this time, for test purposes. But Cranky Vector Noodle turned the four minutes it took me to draw Kirby and Fire Alpaca into 20. Even so, I'm still fairly satisfied with what I drew. I mean, it's pretty hard to screw up drawing Kirby anyway. Mega Man took a little over half an hour, which, all things considered, isn't bad. The subtleness of the brush isn't really there in Flash, which made it tough to put the smaller details on his armor. Overall, it looks decent enough, but, uh, not really to my liking. Last of all, Spider-Man. The overall body shape turned out fine enough, the shape of the logo could have been more accurate, still it was readable. But trying to put it on the web pattern was so frustrating that I lost motivation after 10 minutes. I wasn't going to give up yet, though. Perhaps my usual technique was just better suited for Fire Alpaca, and Flash needed something more... personalized. Time for an experiment! The aim of these experiments was to get the best possible balance of tools and technique. First I tried converting pencil lines to fill lines, for a combination of line smoothness and the ability to manipulate them like brush tool lines. However, the process was time-consuming, tedious, and made the art look too rigid, so I tried adding the brush tool to the mix in the next experiment. The third experiment I tried involved techniques suggested by Studio Yada's tutorial. While time-consuming, it produced some beautiful results. After that, I revisited experiment one, only using the pen and path tool with shapes to make the line art. It still took a lot of time to convert every line to fill, but it definitely came with nicer results. Using the lines from this experiment as guides, I tried a piece of lineless art. I also worked on some lineless art from scratch. During this, I encountered another reason I don't like making stuff in this program. Flash crashes. A fair bit, and it's impossible to predict what will make it throw a tantrum next. But I restarted the lineless art from scratch. It gave me a chance to try different brush sizes and shapes, and experience random parts of the drawing disappearing for some reason. Still, the results were quite amazing. After I completed all the experiments, I was ready to go to bed. And then I was ready to make art and flash. I wanted to do two pieces of art. I thought the first picture would be appropriate to be Mega Man themed, as I felt this series' character designs would benefit from outlines more, especially in the Mega Man 11 style with its metallic detailing. While I didn't base it off of any particular scene in the Mega Man series, I wanted to make a sort of dramatic meeting between Mega Man and Proto Man, with the latter standing on a higher platform. I based some of my techniques on experiments 3 and 5B, using Studio Yada's settings and shape adjusting techniques, while also using different brushes to make the outlines. I found that the vertical oval-shaped brush made smoother lines than the default round brush, 
Really strange, but hey, whatever works. The initial line art of the picture was a bit too rough to work from, so I decided to make a cleaner draft. I had to do two attempts, because, once again, Flash decided to go night-night. Proto Man never really appeared in Mega Man 11, so giving him a look in that style was challenging, but still fun! My favorite parts when drawing him were his cool crossed arm pose and the visor on his helmet. However, the shield was rather tough to get right, due to its shape and position when he's not using it. Still, I managed to do fairly well in a couple of attempts. Next, I worked on Mega Man, who was interesting to draw from behind since I usually focus on the front whenever I draw him. Unlike Proto Man, I didn't use too much time adjusting his final line work. From drafting to final line art, the picture took about 2 hours and 15 minutes. I was not completely finished with it, but coloring and further polishing would have to wait till another day. On to the second picture, which used the lineless approach. I felt the piece would work better without line art, since most characters in the Kirby series are composed of simpler shapes. Starting out, I gave the characters what I like to call dummy colors. Colors that provide a good idea of how the shapes work together. There's a method to my madness, I promise. And speaking of madness, I used two layers in this picture. That's right, only two. I didn't need to add more because each character's art was its own symbol, allowing me to overlap them on the same layer. Any method to keep the workspace less cluttered works for me. When drawing up the characters, I swap between different brush modes. Paint normal, paint behind when I need to add a detail behind the character, and paint selection when I need to add a detail without going outside the character's border, like drawing their face or eyes. This picture shows the usual ensemble of helpers my buddy Mike and I give to Kirby whenever we write up our Kirby stories, even before Kirby Star Allies came out. We always have Gooey from Kirby's Dream Land 2 and 3 as sort of a little brother figure to Kirby, since he always followed him around in 3. Waddle Doo and Parasol Waddle Dee were the go-to helpers I had in Superstar, and for the most part, they show up to help Kirby in other games, including Canvas Curse. It was fun giving each character a unique expression. Kirby all youthful and innocent, Sue hooting and hollering with excitement, Jonah being freaked out, and Gooey... being Gooey? Their different personalities really brought life to the picture. It was also fun creating the characters in this style. Their simple shapes and bright colors really lend themselves to making the designs effective without outlines. The only tough part of the picture was getting the parasol right for Sue, but thankfully it's pretty much obscured by being behind her. Overall, the picture took an hour and a half, and originally was done only in Flash. I say originally because exporting the vector muddied up the colors, no matter what vector file format I put it in. So I had to recreate everything in Photoshop, which took a whole other evening. Even with the color grief, this is definitely one of my favorite pieces of art from 2019. Day 2, and it was time to get back to the Proto Man Appears picture. This time, however, all the cleanup was done in my go-to program, good ol' Fire Alpaca. After having wrestled with Flash's quirks, it felt easy to use Fire Alpaca for error checking, edge cleanup, and making finer line adjustments. Much like the previous picture, I gave Mega Man and Proto Man dummy colors, which makes it easier to keep the color inside the lines. Fire Alpaca allows you to fill using all visible layers by default, rather than just using the selected layer like Photoshop's default. This really helps to speed up the coloring process. I added a rocky cliff in Deserted Wasteland to give a dynamic backdrop to Proto Man's arrival. It was also a simpler choice than, say, putting him within a metropolis or fortress. I didn't add too much to the characters in terms of lighting and shading, with the exception of the shine on Proto Man's visor, which was rather neat to do. Also, I added some smaller clouds and did the gradient in the background by hand rather than using a gradient tool. Made it a bit more natural that way. The cleanup color and adding the environment into this picture took over an hour. I hadn't enjoyed combining working Flash and a raster program for a long while. After nearly a week playing around in Flash, what do I have to say about the program? Flash is an interesting medium. It can create different styles of art, be it with line art or without. By trial and error, I became more familiar with the program. I experimented with tools, changing settings, and using features that I hadn't tried before. As Anthony mentioned in his comment, you can put your sketches in and work to your liking. Now, to your precise liking, I wouldn't 
wouldn't go as far as that. Despite Flash's potential, there are some very noticeable faults. The vector paths are unpredictable. Even at the right magnification, your scribble may end up with a weird bump that you never try to draw. Not to mention the oddity of selecting one vertex and then POOF! The image is gone. And if it's not the unpredictable nature of the vector paths, it's the unpredictable nature of Flash crashing any time it feels like it. You better save your work as much as possible, or you risk losing it. I did so twice during the making of this video. Finally, the joys, and I mean frustration, of exporting vector images from the program and suddenly, oopsie poops, did I lose your colors? Forcing you to recreate a picture because for some reason the file made everything look like mud. In the end, Flash is a test of patience. <laughs> All of it. I want to thank my best friend Gemma for editing the script, as well as giving her love and support. I also want to thank Anthony Cannon for the Beating Procrastination Challenge, and also for commenting on the video I made, which led me to doing this crazy challenge in the first place. I also want to thank my friend Sky for sharing some solid input, and for helping out a lot with the glitch cleanup at the end. I also want to thank my dad for being supportive, watching the art come together during our two-week vacation. I also want to thank my heavenly father, Jehovah, for the strength he gave me to make this happen. And thanks to each and every one of you for watching this vid and for all your patience. I hope it was worth the wait. I started in late September! Where did 2019 go?! I will see you next time with another video, whatever I decide to make. Until then, take care.